We've looked at how the web works and at how to create forms using HTML and CSS. In this video, we'll learn two more things. What happens when we submit a form that uses HTML and how we can receive and use that form data using Flask and Python. Hi guys, welcome back to my Flask tutorial for beginner series. This series is a straight to the point introduction to Flask and how to do web development with it. If you know a bit about Python and you want to try your hand at using Python for the web, check out the complete playlist in the description. In this video, let's start off by looking at submitting HTML forms and how that works. We've learned that browsers make requests to servers. That is how they communicate. Get requests are normally used to retrieve data from a server or to ask the server for some data. However, a request is just a few pieces of data itself a browser sends to a server. The server then sees those pieces and hopefully understands what they mean. For example, the get part of a request is just a string that is included in the request. When the server sees that, if it's programmed to respond to get requests, then it can respond. But instead of making a get request, you could make a sandwich request. Obviously, the server will have no idea what you're talking about. Unless, of course, you know, you coded the server to specifically understand that. If you did use a sandwich request, then you would no longer be making an HTTP request. HTTP is a protocol, which means a set of rules. And if you follow the rules, like using HTTP methods that actually exist, then you are using HTTP. And if you don't, then you're not. This is important because if we want to use HTTP, then there's rules that we need to know about so that we can adhere to them. For example, post requests, another type of request, can have a payload, now also called a body, that is longer data that is included inside the request. And that could be a string of data or it could be something a bit more formalized like JSON. It could also be a file or it could be form data. Some HTTP requests can have a payload and others can't. Get requests, for example, can't have a payload, but post and put can. So why is this relevant? We can tell our form to use different types of requests depending on how we want it to send data. If we tell our form to use get, then it can't put the data in the payload. It puts it in the URL. And if we tell it to use post, then it'll put the data in the payload. Before continuing, if you're liking this video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out and you'll get notified when we release the next videos of this series. So let's create a Flask app that can receive this form data as post. I'll create a file, call it app.py, and this is going to contain our Flask code. I'll also create a virtual environment and install Flask in it, just like we did in the first video of this series. We know that Flask uses functions to respond to browser requests. So now we want to respond to the browser request with our HTML page so that the browser can actually display it when we first access the Flask app. In order to do that with Flask, we need to do some initial setup. We need to create a templates folder and a static folder, and both have to be in the same place as app.py. Inside templates, we're going to put our form.html file, and inside static, we're going to put our style.css file. Then change your HTML code so that the CSS file is retrieved from slash static slash style.css instead of where it is at the moment. And that's going to make more sense in the next video when we look at dynamic files in detail. Then we need to use Flask to return the HTML code to the user. To do this, we need to import Flask and render template inside app.py. Then create the Flask app code and add an endpoint that just does return render template of form.html. Now we can start the Flask app with Flask run. Make sure you've activated a virtual environment first. And when we get to the endpoint, we'll see the form being displayed. Let's import request from Flask and inside our endpoint, add a print statement to display the contents of request.args. This is where Flask is going to put the query strings received in any request. Note that we can only access request.args inside a function that responds to a request. Let's restart the app and fill in and submit the form. Now you can see that something got printed out. If we change the form method to post in the HTML code, then we will no longer receive query strings. Instead, we'll need to change the Flask code to access request.form instead. And that's where Flask puts any form data received in a request. We also have to tell Flask that this endpoint might receive get requests as well as post requests. Remember to restart your app when you make changes to the code. 
If we wanted to access particular fields of the form data, we can do so with request.form.get. This is a method that takes in the name of the field that we want to access and returns its value. For example, request.form.get account will give us the selected option in the HTML dropdown. In the next video, we'll learn how to store these transactions in a list and we'll create another HTML page to display the transactions nicely. This will let us learn about dynamic pages where the contents change based on what the user has sent us earlier on. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.